name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the, the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everybody. And Good morning, Father. And welcome to our celebration of the week after Easter's Mass, the, the, the Feast of uh, Christ's Mercy. And so let's place ourselves in God's presence and ask for forgiveness of our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, and God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast Kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what fount they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever endeavor. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. All came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. 
the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. It is love and joy. reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God, are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than a gold that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet you believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed him his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. The Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. 
Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord. Lord. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Father. Welcome to this Divine Mercy Sunday celebration of Mass. The Gospel that Father Jeff just read and proclaimed to you is, is one of my favorites because it's so full of, uh, of what the Lord wants us to be like in our lives. You know, it has mercy in it, it has faith in it, it has forgiveness in it. And that's why I think Pope St. John Paul II uh, picked this as the Divine Mercy Sunday. We see in that gospel that Jesus says to the disciples, peace be with you. Not once, not twice, but three times. And it's reminiscent for me as we begin Mass of us asking for God's mercy, uh, the, the triple or Lord have mercy uh, that we ask for. It's that wonderful sign that God has mercy upon each and every one of us. You know, it's about faith. It's about faith because of Thomas uh, putting his faith in the Lord, which we'll talk about in just a little bit more later. It's about forgiveness because Jesus breathes upon the apostles, those in that upper room, and he commissions them, tells them, those sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. Those sins you shall retain, they are retained. So I could probably go on for an hour and a half about these three different areas that are so important in our Catholic lives. But that about faith first. You know, Thomas was not there the first time Jesus appeared. He was away. And when they was told by the other disciples that were there that the Lord was there and he was risen, he said, I'm not going to believe that. Not, Not until I put my finger into his nail marks, my hand into his side. Then a week after the resurrection, Thomas was with them this time. And it says that Jesus appeared right in their midst. And he first says to Thomas, Thomas, come here. Put your finger into my hand and your hand into my side. And don't be unbelieving, but believe. And, And Thomas said, Lord, my Lord and my God, it was his faith. You, you know, and we, we call him Doubting Thomas. I, I can see why we do that, but it, it's a misnomer. You know, uh, Thomas is not doubting. As a matter of fact, if you look at the rest of his life, he goes off to India to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. He's the apostle to India. And there he not only preaches, but he's martyred. Jesus. So uh, Thomas didn't doubt in faith. And, and so he's, uh, 
you know, what do, I, thought, I thought to myself this morning, if I was there in that upper room, the second time, the time that Jesus came, w would I have faith a little easier? You know, and I think my answer probably is no, I, I probably wouldn't. You know why? Because we have 2,000 years of witnesses that bring us the faith, that, that we have the church that proclaims it. We, we, we have people who have thought about this and been examples for us. You, you know, uh, faith isn't done by promotion. It's not done by, by attraction to people's lives. And I have over 2,000 years of, of faith that I can uh, rely, rely upon and emanate in my own life. And so I think that is one thing that we can bring from this gospel about our own faith. You know, to see where, how, how important the church is, how important people are in our lives, those that, that are examples to us, those that share the faith with us. Mercy. You know, when Jesus said, peace be with you, it, it meant, I trust you with my life. You know, these were the disciples that had run away from the Lord when he was being crucified and hid themselves. They hid themselves in the upper room. They were so afraid. And Jesus comes and says, not once, but three times, peace be with you. I have mercy, mercy for you. I trust you with my life. Then, then he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. Those sins you shall forgive. They are forgiven. Those sins you shall retain. They are retained. Commissioning. Commissioning the church to forgive sins through, through, the, through the priest and bishops. And what a gift that is. And, and what a gift forgiveness is. What a gift that mercy is. You know, uh, I picture that Jesus not only went there and said, peace be with you, but he went to each of them and hugged them. And in that hug, they, they realized that they first were forgiven so that they will be able to forgive sins. What a gift. What a wonderful gift that is. And so this Divine Mercy Sunday, just full of what it means to be a Catholic, what it means to be able to celebrate that Easter mystery, that Divine Mercy Sunday that we're celebrating today. Be filled with God's mercy. Be filled with faith of all those that have gone before us. And let the Lord hug you today on this Divine Mercy Sunday, knowing that he forgives all of our sins. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we give thanks for the risen Christ living among us, we petition the Father to hear our prayers. For the Church, that through the inspiration and guidance of the Holy Spirit, we may grow in our trust and love of the risen Jesus, that especially at this lockdown, we may be able to renew our perspective on things that really matter in life 
and values more which are godly. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Francis, our Pope, Donald Trump, our President, Michael Duca, our Bishop, John Bell, our Governor, and all those entrusted with leadership, that the risen Lord may grant them good health, wisdom, and strength to carry the cross with the suffering Christ as they continue to strive protecting the people of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For the repentance and conversion of all hearts that have turned away from the Lord, for healing in our world mentally, spiritually, and physically, that the abundance of divine mercy flowing from the open heart of the risen Lord may bring about the swift end to the coronavirus crisis and protect us from the spread. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For those who are isolated from receiving the sacraments at this time, that through his, this, ma this Holy Mass podcast, they may profoundly experience the risen Lord's presence with them and be filled with hope and joy. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For all our health care providers and silent heroes working daily, each in their own way, that God protect them from contamination of the disease and continue to bless them with health and courage and protect their families too. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For those who are grieving the loss of a family member or friend, or who, because of the present crisis, are in anguish because they cannot be at the side of their dying loved ones, that they find consolation in the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, who is leading us to glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For increase of vocations to priesthood and religious life from our parish and throughout the church, that we may have more people who courageously witness the power of God in our world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Now for all we commend to the mercy of God. Don Metcalf, Mamie Croxton, Joseph Acord, Ronald Parker, Mark Leo, Dana Baker Opperman, Bruce Petrie, Austin Collingsworth, Luke Everett Fontenot, Kay and Charles Pelletier, Jane Parton, Nikki Bellard, Lynn Landry, Michael Milliken, Roy LaFleur, Francis Cavell, Joe Gudo, Maud Williams, Roseanne Langwell, Elizabeth Castasu, Teresa Roberts and Danny Cranford, Karen McFerrin, Carl Cooper, Anthony Musso, Charles Weaver Jr., souls in the Who, Muin, and Hewen family, souls in most need, Liz and Hubert Owen, Kathleen Smith, Miranda Welch, Fred Cornier, Bernadette Lee, Diana Morgan, Joe Angelo, family, Charles Rister, Rizzler, Tyler Craig. The adoration light burns this week for all souls in purgatory. The sanctuary light burned this week at St. John for Tyler Craig, Betty and Jean Craig, and at Our Lady for Paula Borg. And for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts and unite in this holy mass, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We also remember the souls of Sam Broadway, father of Gabe Kimish, Peter Anthony Ferreira, Sr., who recently passed away, the father of Peter Ferrara, Ryan Rabelais, St. John Parishioner, who passed away this last Friday, father of our parishioner, Connie Tillman. For the eternal repose of their souls and for the consolation and peace of their families, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. And now let us pray, pray our coronavirus prayer. Jesus Christ, when you walked the earth, you traveled the countryside, towns and villages curing every disease and illness among the people. At your command, all who approached you in illness were made well, made whole. Now, Lord, we implore you to blanket our world with your love and your healing presence. 
Open the hearts of all to turn back to you in their hearts and to seek you in all things. We pray that for all who have been infected and affected by the coronavirus may find their strength in you. For those who have died, may they find their rest in you. Guide the leaders of all nations to work together for the family of man, working to help all in need out of love for all mankind. Give grace, courage, and strength to all medical professionals who put their well-being in harm's way for the sake of others. We pray for your guidance through the waters of uncertainty and for a sense of your presence as we place our trust in you. Gracious God and Father, may this crisis bring your healing presence to a wounded world so that mentally, spiritually, and physically we may return to you in all things. Amen. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people and those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to claim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he destroyed our deaths, by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, whom we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross for the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known, Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them fullness of life. Grant also, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the apostles and martyrs, and all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Christ, Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Pray now, as Jesus has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the hope, the coming of our, our Lord, as we await the hope of our coming with our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to his apostles, 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called for the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we close today, again, we'd like to thank you. We're looking forward to the day when we'll be back together at the table of the Lord. Hopefully that's not going to be too long from now few reminders, being Divine Mercy Sunday at 3 o'clock today, our wonderful sisters will sing the chaplets of Divine Mercy, and after the chaplets, those who would like to participate with us online are certainly welcome to do that. If you'd like to come here to the parking lot, we can expose the Blessed Sacrament, and weather permitting, I'll do the benediction to each car that passes. I'll definitely do it, whether it's raining or not, but I'll either do it from under the overhang or out close by the street. Also, we remind you that every morning we're doing a podcast, and that's usually up a little before noon, and it's available on the website. And again, thank you for being with us, and we look forward to being together.
Yes, we really do. And, uh, you know, if, uh, somebody you know that's a parishioner that doesn't know about these uh, podcasts, and uh, uh, let them know so that uh, they can uh, participate in, in it also. So uh, thanks for being here, and we're honored to be able to do this for you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.